So um, this is the wrist of an, a 20-year-old uh, uh, female who presents with dorsal wrist pain. Um, so I think the important thing to recognize uh, is, is, is pay close attention to the history. Her main complaint is an inability to load the wrist in extension, such as doing yoga exercises or uh, gym, such as planking or doing a push-up or even climbing out of a chair or a bath. Uh, loading the wrist in extension is very painful. Um, uh, she had a similar experience on the right side, uh, successfully treated with a cortisone injection. So let's just uh, um, examine her. We realize that there's no, uh, nothing to observe on, uh, uh, on looking. Uh, there's no swelling and there's no deformity. On palpation, it's important to flex the wrist. Just become slightly from the side. Uh, it's important to flex the wrist. Uh, and uh, sometimes what you will see when you flex the wrist is a, a slight swelling in keeping with an occult or small ganglion, but I don't see one here. Uh, but when you flex the wrist slightly and you palpate just distal to Lister's tubicle, so there's Lister's tubicle, and as I come onto the dorsal scapho lunate area and I push quite hard, this is the area of tenderness directly over the dorsal scapho lunate area. There's no synovitis or regional swelling. Uh, that might suggest uh, Kienbox disease. And there's no dorsal prominence of the scaphoid to suggest a scaphoid lunate dissociation. We can do the scaphoid shift test, um, which is to place the uh, elbow on the table, firm thumb pressure over the scaphoid tubicle in ulnar deviation, and then bring the wrist across into radial deviation. The scaphoid wants to flex, and if she does have scaphoid lunate dissociation, the scaphoid can't flex, and therefore will pop out dorsally, and you'll feel it with your index finger, and she has no click and no discomfort on doing the scaphoid shift test. Um, this is a typical dorsal wrist syndrome or occult ganglion. Something is pushing on the post-interosseous nerve, and uh, these patients do very well with a cortisone shot. I gave her a cortisone shot to the right wrist in 2017 with a 100% relief after one injection. And that's what we're going to do on this, in this particular case now as well. Um, okay, now we're going to inject um, uh, the dorsal wrist syndrome. So once again, it's important to inject the point of maximal tenderness. So the patient will tell me where the pain is. There's Lister's tubicle. And as I come more distal, I will come onto the dorsal scaphalunate area right there. Mm -hmm. Then I do is just make a mark with my thumbnail because then it won't get washed off. I used to make a mark with pen. And then as soon as you put the alcohol on, the pen mark disappears. So just make a mark with your thumbnail, clean it well. And then that's the point of maximal discomfort. So... Uh, uh, this is a, a one mole of lignocaine mixed with one mole of celesta and soluspan. And uh, the patient's important to keep the wrist in slight flexion so you can identify the area. And then it's straight into the dorsal scaphalunate area. And you're trying to inject around the post interosseous nerve terminal branches. You can usually put a little bit of uh, the, the mixture into the radiocarpal joint and sometimes a little bit into the midcarpal joint as well. But otherwise the bulk of it goes on the dorsal capsule where the postintosseous nerve is. About 70% of patients will respond to one cortisone injection. Some patients do require a second. Okay, that's you. Okay, you can stop it there.